curious. Um, so then after that, I slept another night for three hours. Um, and so by the end, I definitely slowed down. Uh, what I found is that in the beginning, people are very enthusiastic, riding fast. And in the beginning, I thought, shall I resist it or shall I just go with it? And I decided to just go with it and hang out as much as I could in the groups and sort of leverage other people's enthusiasm. Um, and uh, that worked out really well because that made, gave me a big buffer and in the end uh, I finished in uh, just over 74 hours so I left Sunday night and I was back on Wednesday night. Um, so, yeah, so about the bike, um, yeah, the bags, they're all dill pickle uh, gear but uh, I really like them, they have all kinds of pockets in there. In my bag, I typically have um, a, a chargeable battery and phone on the side. I have um, the rest is all food in here. Bottles. Um, it, it bears noting that he could put a third bottle cage on the spike too, so he yep. could carry three bottles. And then, uh, in the end, it wasn't needed because typically about every 40 to 45 miles there's a control so you can refill. Um, then I have the um, uh, local, also local, local light. I didn't have that back then, but uh, it is charged by the hub generator. And it also has a USB charger that allows me to uh, power my Garmin and um, phone. So uh, during the day I would power, power stuff and recharge things, and at night I can't have them go at the same time. So at night I would have the light. During the day, I would reach, uh, reach, uh, reach charge stuff. And then uh, this uh, this bag was is more like this when, I, when it's actually filled up. <laughs> and there I have more clothes. So when I and riding at night, even in France in the summer, it's it was like 40 degrees, even uh, below 40 degrees. I remember seeing folks from uh, warmer countries, uh, India, Indonesia. And they had to bail the first night because they got they were not used to the, the, the temperature. And even though the, the, the weather was really really mild from that sense, we had I had no rain at all. Whereas there's been other editions where there was full rain, is my understanding. So hopefully this year we'll, I hope to get my 2015 weather back. But uh, um, yeah, then the other thing uh, is saddle. So this is a saddle I, uh, I'm gonna try. I use the, on the ride itself, I use the Stella Anatomica. I don't know if you've ever seen one. It's a, it's a leather saddle. It's sort of like a, sort of like a hammock. Um, that, uh, it, the downside I found of that one is sort of like, when you're riding it, so the hammock is getting lower and lower. And the other <laughs> so I, I, found, I found a little bit too much variability in it. So I'm gonna try uh, this one uh, this spring. Okay, so there's more to this bike than like there's the obvious features. Uh, you know, he's got a frame pump, so it's easy and quick to get air, and you don't know how many times you're going to fly it when you're out there. Um, it's a custom position that's comfortable, and the titanium frame that's a comfortable material. So while there's no there's no right or wrong, again, this is maximizing comfort and reducing the risk of frame breakage, uh, which if that happens, your ride is going to be cut short, or uh, almost worse yet, if you develop a creek somewhere, like if you have uh, a bad bottom bracket or something like that, you're gonna go mad. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you don't want anything that's going to absolutely drive you to insanity. So those are certain things to consider, uh, you know, having handlebars in the right place. This is not a particularly aggressive geometry. And Henry races cyclocross on this bike, but this is not particularly aggressive geometry because that would cause shoulder pain and back pain and all that sorts of things, which is not ideal. Um, full fenders, that's great. Probably getting wet anyway, but anything again to try to protect you and make it just a little bit more pleasant um, can be can be nice. You're not worrying quite as much about your time. Um, he's got really big tires which is nice because that's comfort that's protecting you from the pave that you're going to head out oh, there. Oh, my Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, smooth ride. A smooth ride really starts to pay off after a really long period of time. Tubes or tubeless? So at the moment, um, it's actually a mix of both. That's tubeless. That's 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got a tube in there, but it has sealant in the inner tube. It's because I had trouble sealing it for a bit there. But, um, I'm still thinking about, so I did uh, PVP uh, on that setup, uh, sorry, the, with the tube, I had no flats. Um, um, so, uh, but I think uh, I, I haven't traveled with uh, tubeless yet because it's a little bit of a, it can be messy. And uh, uh, so I, at the moment I'm thinking just to use tubes because it's uh, because of the mess of sealant and sometimes the mounting is not doing what you always want where the tires have their own wheel. And, uh, and you may not have a compressor on them. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, and this pump will not get that pressure out there. Yeah, tubeless, tubeless is great when it's working well. Um, when it fails or you have a problem, it's a really big problem. It's something when you're self supporting is not ideal. So, yeah, tubes tried and true, very easy to change, very easy to get replacement tubes. Um, and to use more standard equipment means it's easier to find a tube out there. Yeah. And what if you need a spare part? So the, yeah, so that the other, there's also the reason I don't have hydraulic brakes. Uh, I, I want to have the, uh, I, I, for cyclocross I really should have hydraulic brakes because it's, they're more uh, acute and precise. But just uh, because of the maintenance and if something happens with it, a cable you can replace. And I don't see myself messing around with oil when I'm being parked in the morning somewhere on the side of the road. And then handbelt wheels, same thing. If you break a spoke, one, you have a high enough spoke count that if you break a spoke, who cares, throw it away, keep riding. You don't do anything about it. Um, and then if you do need to replace a spoke, you can. And you have your replacement spokes in your seat post, hiding away in your frame, and you take, you're able to take care of your own problems. Um, but also handle it because the front wheel is a generator uh, okay, wheel, here. so you need to have spokes. that. Great. Um, so those are all considerations. The more choices you can make that allow you to fix your own bike if something goes wrong because you don't know what could go wrong. And uh, hydraulic brakes are great when you're riding near a bike shop. <laughs> and when you know the mechanic's working. Um, <laughs> they up. So those are, that's definitely a, a good consideration. And then so a lot of people say, well, disc brakes or rim brakes. Whatever, whatever you want. Uh, they both work really well. Jake had, had a disc brake and a rim brake both on the same front wheel with four brake levers. <laughs> wow. <That's laughs> you never have too many brakes. Yeah. <laughs> or, or you ride fixed gear and don't have any brakes at all. Well, it was a fixed gear. Four brakes on one, one wheel with a fixed gear. Yeah, when you're we're riding along, you don't want to be braking with your with your legs. <laughs> we're not doing, you know, yeah. skid marks and stuff. I also, I also I will say I did up to a 400k with only one front brake. And your one arm gets really tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's good to have both no, hands. On my previous bike, I had the rim brakes. And in rough weather, I really quickly realized that it's, um, they don't work at some point. But with cyclocross, I noticed you can also run out of your, uh, uh, your brake pads. I had in one race, brake pads totally gone. Uh, so that didn't happen. Extra equipment, too. Replace. Yep. I think that's, I think we've talked about, oh, orange. Uh, another thing, aesthetic. You gotta like this bike. You're gonna be taking a lot of pictures of it. <laughs> when you're stopping by the side of the road, it's not all dark all the time. You, you want to take your photography. You want to like what you see. And so Henry, orange is the color of fast. And I bet you everybody in this room believes they have a different color or something else they want to see that makes them feel faster. Red ones go faster. Feel like what you <laughs> or black in your case. <laughs> um, yeah. Or it's just so. a car off of a royal house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there's there's that too. Again, it's all personal preference, but it's trying to maximize your enjoyment of getting to PvP and then completing PvP very happily. Anything else? Although Melinda just reminded me that I actually bet back then said that I was never going to do it again. We have a word we call randomnesia. 